Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into things. A podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 89 Teen Acne. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my inspired and thoughtful co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty well. So we had a couple of fun episodes in between little breaks that we took there. We did take a couple of weeks off. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think this week we're kind of getting back into the swing of things. We're going to do another one of our more, I don't know, informative type of podcast less fun Mm -hmm. yeah but i think we'll have fun doing it sure before we get into uh anything is there any special news that you wanted to announce possibly what would that be um on so we actually were debating this for a little while we were planning on getting a new cat yeah um and wednesday it was Wednesday, right? Or it Thursday. was indeed Wednesday. Okay, so on Wednesday, we ended up adopting our new kitten. And what's the kitten's name? Well, I finally picked a name after everything, and her name's Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Okay. Now, we do have, as you might expect, loads of pictures of Pumpkin already. And videos. And videos. Uh, We're not going to show them here yet. I think we're actually going to do a whole podcast dedicated to showcasing Pumpkin in all her glory in one of the coming weeks. Yay. So, just a little tease until we do the really cute kitten episode. Yay. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about teen acne. And before we get into it, I would invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music. And effective this week, we are now on Pandora as well. We'd also invite folks to give us some feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insightsintothings. I'm sorry, insights underscore things. You can hit us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are insights into things, or you can reach out to us through our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Now, are we ready to talk pus and sores and bumps and all that you fun really stuff? You really gotta have to phrase it like that. <laughs> Whatever, let's get into this. Let's get into it. So, Maddie, tell us, what is teen acne? Okay, so acne is a condition of the skin that shows up as different types of bumps. These bumps can be blackheads, whiteheads, pimples, or cysts. Teens get acne because of the hormonal changes that come with puberty. If your parents had acne as teens, it's more likely that you will too. The good news is that, for most people, acne goes away almost completely by the time they are out of their teens. The the type of acne that a lot of teens get is called acne vulgaris. It means of the common type. It usually shows up on the face, neck, shoulders, upper back, and chest. So, growing up as a kid... I never really had acne. I'd get a pimple here, a pimple there, that type of thing. And I don't think mommy really suffered from acne all that much either. Probably same thing, a few pimples here and there. Are you, do you suffer from acne? Um, I'm pretty sure I do. I, um, I get a lot of pimples 
everywhere, mainly on my face. Um, so I definitely don't say that, like, I only have one or two. I, I have, like, at least five on my face that I could probably count right now. Right. And that's perfectly normal. Like a high percentage of teens, you know, go through this and it's part of the normal biological process. And we'll talk in a few minutes about what causes it. Um, but a lot of teens tend to get self-conscious when they get acne and you really shouldn't cause it's a normal thing. It's, I mean, it doesn't happen to everyone, but it happens to the majority of teenagers. Yeah. My brother suffered from acne. Uh, quite severely and he would get it all through his face mostly on his on his cheeks actually oh. under his eyes and he went through all kinds of different treatments and different kind of medications and it was one of those things where nothing he tried help it just sort of had to run its course and by the time he was out of his teen years he was perfectly fine um, i worked with a woman years ago whose daughter had severe acne and she was kind of in a uh I don't know, kind of in a elite crowd, sort of like the popular kids. And, and she took a lot of harassment from that because the other kids in her group didn't really suffer from acne, acne as severely as she did. Um, so it had, it took an emotional toll on her. Uh, so that's some of the things we kind of have to take into consideration here is that one, it's, it's normal. And, and two, kids can be mean and they're going to be mean when they, when they see anything that's different than what they normally see. Yep. So you, you kind of have to not let that get to you, though, but it's, that's easier said than done, right? Yeah. So what causes teen acne? The hair follicles or pores in your skin contain sub sebaceous, I can't even pronounce it now. We did this beforehand. They contain sebaceous glands, also called oil glands. These glands make something called sebum, which is an oil that lubricates your hair and your skin. Most of the time, the sebaceous glands make the right amount of sebum. As the body begins to mature and develop, though, hormones stimulate the sebaceous glands to make more sebum. Pores become clogged if there's too much sebum and too many dead skin cells. Bacteria can then get trapped inside the pores and multiply. This causes swelling and redness, which is the start of acne. The pore gets clogged up and closes, but bulges out from the skin, and you're left with what's called a whitehead. If the pore gets clogged up but stays open, the top surface can darken, and you're left with what's called a blackhead. Sometimes the wall of the pore opens, allowing the sebum, bacteria, and dead skin cells to make their way under the skin, and you're left with a small red bump called a pimple. That's where your pimple term comes from. Sometimes pimples have a pus-filled top from the body's reaction to the bacterial infection. So anytime you get an infection, if you get a cut or something like that, your body attacks the, the, the germs and the bacteria in there with white blood cells. And as the white blood cells kill off the bacteria, it forms this pus, and, and the pus is what you have to get out of the body. Ah. So when you pop a pimple, that's all that is. That's your body's natural defense against the bacteria that's in the pimple. Mm. So it's not anything like you gooey or nasty or anything like that. It's, it's, it's your body defending itself. Mm -hmm. Clogged pores that open up very deep in the skin can cause nodules which are infected lumps or cysts that are bigger than pimples and can be painful. Occasionally, large cysts that seem like acne may be boils caused by a staph infection. So I had a friend of mine, well, he was an employee of mine <clears throat> many years back, and he had suffered from, from uh, acne, and his acne kind of moved into adult acne as, as he got older. And what would happen is he would get these nodules under his ears and they were infected pimples that would happen and it would infect throughout the skin and he would get these large cysts that would form and he would have these bumps on his neck and he would have to go to the doctor and he'd have to get them drained and cleaned and taken care of and stuff like that. So that's something to keep in mind is that if you do get pimples, you need to keep them clean. You need to get them clean. 
And if they start to get infected, you need to make sure that you apply proper medication or see a doctor. Otherwise, they can get worse. And they can be very painful. That was for when he used to get those, he'd get them once a year maybe. But when he got them, they were very painful for him until he got them taken care of. And I had one before, years ago. We were on vacation, actually. I got one on the back of my neck. And uh, I generally have sensitive skin, which is ironically why I keep the beard. Because if I shave every day, my face will break out. So I had to kind of leave the beard there so I didn't shave all the time. But I would get them on my neck from time to time. I get pimples on my neck. And what happened was one of them got infected and I got a cyst. And I went to the doctor and the doctor tried to drain it and it wouldn't drain. And it got to the point where I couldn't even sleep at night because it hurt so much. And then we happened to be on vacation and at the time and I was applying warm compresses and all the stuff the doctor was saying. And we were up at Great Wolf Lodge. I think you were, you were born at the time. I think you were just a baby at the time. And, uh, you know, I kept trying to drain it and finally it, it popped and it drained and it was, it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy was there and it was quite alarming, but the, the relief of that was, was, uh, very satisfying finally to get rid of that pressure on there. But, but yeah, I mean, if you don't take care of these, of the pimples themselves when they come up and it's very important, you can't just ignore them. I mean, don't be self-conscious about them. But don't ignore them. They are a medical condition. They can get infected. Make sure you're applying proper medical treatment for them. So that's the big thing. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and we're going to talk about the psychosocial impact of acne. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back. We are talking teen acne today, and we're going to talk about the psychosocial impact of acne. Acne can trigger depressive tendencies. So when you consider that over 80% of acne sufferers are impressionable teens and young adults who are at the verge of discovering themselves, building self-esteem, and developing vital social skills necessary to function effectively in society, you'll appreciate just how much psycho, psychological damage acne can do to the sufferer. So we already talked about a couple of instances. I told you about the one uh, daughter of the woman that I worked with and the uh, effect that it had on her. Have you encountered any kind of social... I don't know, attacks or razzing or anyone making fun of you because of the, the, I mean, you have mild acne at this point, but has anyone ever said anything about it to you in school or anything like that? Um, not that I know of, actually. I mean, I never really talked with many kids and not many kids actually came up to me and I didn't, and not that, and Unless, like, I forgot a time or something, I don't think any of them actually ever, like, um, made fun of me for having acne. So, having acne at this point in time, does it have any kind of effect on you feeling negative about yourself or your self-image or anything like that? I mean, kind of. I still, like, acne definitely, like, 
makes me look a little freaky. Um, and I definitely can say that I do have, like, small problems with that. But I also remember, but I also, like, I also have to think about, I shouldn't really care what other people think about me, and that this is a normal process that should hopefully stop when I get older. Right, right. Well, one of the other things they talk about is that acne can lead to low self-esteem. Depression is just one out of several adverse effects of acne. People suffering from a severe outbreak also struggle with low self-esteem and poor body image. So the the mild acne that you have now, does it have any kind of negative effect on your body image of yourself? I mean, I always think I look kind of weird with the fact that I have a bunch of red dots over my fa- a few red dots over my face, but I never really, like, contributed that to my body image. Like, I know I looked a little weird, but I never really took that into, like, my overall body image. I didn't, it didn't impact my self-esteem too much. Sure, it, lo- it kind of did lower a bit of my confidence, but... I still had to remember that this was normal and other people have it and I shouldn't care what other people think about it. Now, most cases of acne usually come in, in waves, like some day, some some weeks may be better than others. Some weeks you may have an outbreak. It could be attributed to physical activity. If you're sweating a lot, if it's hot out, do you find that it comes in waves for you or do you always have basically the same level of acne all the time i mean i have the same level of acne most of the time like except with my forehead like for some reason my forehead is where most of my acne resides um probably because i scratch my head a lot maybe i'm not sure um but occasionally there are the times where i have acne in the more uncomfortable places like where my nose is or my ears or my mouth Mm -hmm. um and at that point like that's the only time where I really notice it. Um, I don't like, I don't really keep, um, I don't really keep much, um, I don't keep much attention to the acne going on around me, but when it's in an uncomfortable spot on my body and where I can feel the pain, that's when I kind of pay more attention to it. Makes sense. So they go on to say that it can cause social withdrawal. Social withdrawal is another adverse effect of acne on teenagers. Often, especially in middle and high school, students with acne are exposed to cruel acne-shattering taunts from others. These taunts, if not nipped in the bud, could ultimately lead a person with acne to withdraw from all forms of social interaction. Have you ever felt compelled to not partake in a social activity or something like that because of your acne? Yeah. No, I haven't. Acne hasn't ever been a cause for me not wanting to do a social activity with other people. I mean, like, I never really um, had much problem with people um, referring to my acne. It was more just, like, my own kind of thing that still wasn't too bad. But overall, it never really stopped me from um, doing social interactions. Of course, there were other things that did stop me from doing social interactions, but I don't think acne was one of them. I see. Well, the last thing they talk about here is that it can impact negatively on education and work. Not only do young people with acne have to struggle with the physical and psychological effects of the skin ailment, the impact often spills over into their work or academics. So do you find at any point in time that, you know, acne that you've had has caused you to not be able to perform at school <clears throat> or not want to go to school or or anything like that that would have caused a negative effect on your schoolwork? Actually, no. I never even knew it really impacted your schoolwork. Honestly, um, that never really has happened. I never, like, never want i didn't i never like not wanted to go to school because of my acne and i didn't know like it can be like that like deep yeah with the acne well and and referring to the the gentleman who had worked for me years ago uh there were times that when his the cyst that he would grow would get to a point where he had to seek medical treatment he'd have to take time off from work to to go and have that taken care of uh and we also we worked in a call center so we had headsets on a lot and there was 
you know, it would get to the point where he couldn't wear the headsets anymore because it was very uncomfortable for him until he got, got it taken care of. So at least from that perspective, it can certainly cause negative impacts on work. And I think from a, a school standpoint, you may get kids, and, and I know this happened with uh, my friend's daughter, where she doesn't want to be seen in public because she would have outbreaks that are that are so severe it it would literally look like her face had been mauled by a dog you know not to be cruel or anything but it would get so bad and she she tried some extreme treatments for it as well some of which probably weren't the best and some of those treatments would cause burning on the skin itself as as it tried to work and th that combination of an outbreak plus the wrong treatment would leave her feeling very self-conscious and she would take time off from school because she didn't want to be seen in public. I think that's a lot of the impact that you see there. And I suppose some of it has to be discomfort. Like you've mentioned, there are certain areas that you would get it where it would be very uncomfortable for you. Um, have you had any severe experiences where it's been painful or uncomfortable and you haven't been able to do certain activities as a result? Well, there was one time that when I'd gotten in, in my ear, I had headphones in and I was listening to music. And you know how, like, sometimes when it pops, like, you get, like, some of the pus stuff coming out. Right. And occasionally it can even lead to a little bit of blood. Well, that's kind of what happened to me. I ended up taking the earphones out, and my ears were base, and my ear was basically bleeding. Yeah. Um. But although it it didn't really stop me from doing too many activities, it was just kind of a shock, I guess. Um. But I definitely know that. Um. In certain parts, like sometimes, like I would have to like not do a certain interaction like i wouldn't have to i wouldn't be able to move my i wouldn't be able to move certain parts of my body due to the acne i had um in the certain parts but normally it was mainly just my face and it wasn't too hard um but i can definitely see how it would be discomforting too discomforting to where you can completely stop an entire activity yeah and sometimes it really depends on where the acne occurs because there are certain areas you know, just take the face, for instance. You know, there's certain areas on your face that have more nerve endings than others. So your forehead, for instance, not so many nerve endings there. So when you get in there, it's not that uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But if you get one like on the rim of your nose or on the inside of your nose, there's a lot of nerve endings there because it's one of your sense organs. Yeah. And as a result, they can be extremely painful. Um, and that's usually like if I get them, because I, I have a deviated septum, uh, on the one side. So as a result, I, I tend to get pimples on the inside on the one side. And when I get them on the nose, they are very painful. They're the ones that, I mean, I don't like call out of work for it or anything. Uh, but you know, even without touching it, they can be very painful. Yeah. So just some things to keep in mind. So, uh, we're going to take another quick break and we will come back and we're going to talk about the 12 top things to help manage acne. Because I think, and, and I think most medical experts agree that you're not going to solve acne. It happens. It's, it's, a, it's a chemical reaction that your body has from hormones. So it's less about figuring out how to stop it from happening and more about how to manage it when it does happen. And a lot of the techniques that we talk about here will help to minimize the impact that it has on you. But it won't prevent acne. There's, there's really no known cure for acne. Mm -hmm. So let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll talk about how to manage your acne. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. 
look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back. We are talking teen acne, and we're talking techniques to manage teen acne. Now, as we talked about in our opening segment, acne is often caused from clogged pores. Now, the pores will clog naturally as your body produces an excess amount of oil as part of a hormonal reaction as you go through puberty. However, during day-to-day activity, you get dirt, dust, and dead skin and everything else that attaches itself to your skin too. So one of the important things they talk about is to have your teen use over-the-counter acne products and wash problem areas with a gentle cleanser twice daily. And this is something you should do if you've got acne and it will help to minimize the spread of the acne and it will also help to heal the the problem areas that you have already. What else do we have? Uh, we also have, after washing the skin, treat with a tropical product containing amphetamine? Adipoline. Adipoline, okay. Adipoline. So that's that's like a alcohol-based substance that helps to do deep cleaning on the pores. Because the, thing, the other thing you have to keep in mind is you're, you have dead skin cells. You produce dead skin cells on a regular basis and you replace them and so forth. So by cleaning off those dead skin cells, it reduces the opportunity for them to get clogged into the pores. Okay. And that's what this substance does. They say to avoid facial scrubs, astringents and masks, as well as excessive scrubbing and washing. Now, when we talk about masks here, we're not talking about, you know, COVID style masks. We're talking about the type of facial masks that people use, women use to exfoliate the skin and, uh, you know, pull off that dead skin. Oh, yeah, those. That's the kind of mask that we're talking about here. So they're saying avoid those because one of the things that can happen with those and with the scrubbing is you can actually break open the pores themselves and expose them to outside dirt and grime and stuff like that. So you don't want to exacerbate the problem by scraping off the protective layer that you do have. That's kind of what they're referring to here. Ah. What's number four? Number four is remind your teen to use their acne treatment, but be careful to only remind them occasionally. So you don't want to nag, right? Yeah. What happens when daddy nags you? You just sort of tune me out. Mm. And your acne treatment could be over the counter. It could be a prescription. Uh, you just want to make sure that they're they're keeping up with their treatments, just like any other kind of medication. But you don't want to be a, a pain in the neck about it. Yeah. Because, you know, everyone knows I can be a pain in the neck, regardless of whether we're talking acne or not. Yep. Don't touch or pick at problem areas. Uh, and this is something that I think a lot of people tend to have problems with, is... I'm the type of person, I if I have a sore or a scratch or a bug bite, I'm constantly picking at it and scratching it and making it worse. It's just, I don't know, human nature. But the problem you have is when you do that, your fingers and your hands are dirty. They have germs. They have bacteria on them. So as you're touching these areas, you're inducing more of a problem to an area that's already infected with something. Or you're, you're inducing germs and bacteria to parts of your skin that might not be affected that will now become infected. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you try to keep things clean. Even when you're doing your regular cleansing activities, make sure you wash your hands first before you apply anything. Even if you're popping a pimple, make sure you, you wash your hands before you pop a pimple. 
Make sure you have a skin cleanser or something like that or peroxide or something to apply to it after you've popped it. You want to make sure, you know, it's medical. Just like surgery, everything that, that's exposed to the air from inside your body needs to be cleansed. What's number six? Number six is your teen should use shampoo every day. Do you use shampoo every day? Well, when I shower. But you don't shower every day, right? Mm, yeah. What's it like uh, every other day or so at this point? And as you get older and your body starts to mature and starts to produce more bodily fluids, we'll say, <laughs> uh, sweat and so forth, you're picking up that pace and you're going to keep picking up that pace. But shampoo, because one of the areas that produces a lot of oil are your hair follicles. That's why if you go without showering for a few days, your hair starts to get very greasy because it produces a protective coating on your hair. But that protective coating can also, you know, spread from your hair. Like, for instance, you have long hair, obviously. So if you let your hair down and it's rubbing against your face and your cheeks and your ears and everything else, it's got oil on it. So it's rubbing that oil all over your skin you're you're fortunate enough that you tend to keep your hair back for the most part so any area that's really exposed to that's really probably the back of your neck that you'd have to worry about but other people tend to keep their hair you know down and loose and that's where that problem comes from so by using shampoo on a regular basis you keep cleansing that oil off of the skin it also helps to prevent the hair follicles from producing an excess amount of oil too as you keep removing the oil from the hair. So just something to keep in mind. Number seven, shower after activities that cause sweat and oil production. And I think you do this because as you, when you do your gym class and stuff like that, if you get very sweaty, you're going to go get a shower because you just feel uncomfortable, right? Do you have a situation or have you had situations where you've done a strenuous exercise and then not got the shower afterwards? Uh, sometimes, yeah. And, and does that have any kind of negative effect on the acne? I mean, it might. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I haven't had, like, a verdict um, because, like, I haven't done, like, a full-on, like, I haven't done a full-on scientific method experiment on it yet, so... Uh, Is there any activity you, you do that you see does cause an increase in acne? Um, not that I know of. My acne's kind of... Like I kind of said before, my acne, like, it's kind of the same most of the time. Right. Um, so... And the acne you have is is fairly mild, so you're very fortunate when it comes to that. What's number eight? Number eight is treat acne early. Yes, this is important because if you don't treat it early, it's one of these things that has what's, what we refer to as a cascade effect. So the more you have, the more you get. So if you don't control it early, it can very quickly get out of control. So when it starts to sprout, that's a key to you that, one, your skin's conducive to it, so then you need to take proper steps to make sure you keep your skin clean. And the other is that if you have it now and you don't treat it, then it's going to get worse. So it's almost like a warning sign at that point. Number nine is to protect the skin from the sun. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. People that have certain skin conditions it's recommended that they get light treatments where the ultraviolet light from the sun or from a, from a lamp can actually help with some of their skin conditions. When it comes to acne, though, the direct sunlight can actually cause skin cells to die. Your surface skin cells will die. Mm. This is what happens when you get sunburn, for instance. So the idea of protecting the skin from the sun is to avoid the excess of dead skin cells so that you reduce the chances of clogging up your pores. Okay. If for instance, you are at the beach or outside of the pool, 
you're probably going to put some kind of sunblock on as well. And any chemicals that you apply to your face, whether it's makeup, sunscreen, suntan oil, whatever it is, that has the potential to cause your skin to, your pores to clog up as well. Um, if you're swimming in a pool, the chlorine can get into your skin and, and get into your pores. Uh, if you're down at the ocean, the seawater, you know, there's there's tons of various chemicals and minerals that are in the ocean that can then get into your pores as well. So should you go out in the sun for a period of time and do any of these activities, it's very important that when you're out of the sun, you you go through that cleansing process again and make sure you get all that stuff off of your skin. What is, what are we on, number 10? Mm-hmm. So, number 10 is avoid excessive amounts of cosmetics. That kind of goes back to what I was saying. You know, the, the fewer chemicals that you can put on your skin, the better off you are. All this stuff can cause problems. Even, even you know, perfume. You know, if you apply perfume or deodorant, it's an aerosol-based deodorant. You know, it gets in the air and it gets on your skin. So if you have acne, you probably want to use a roll-on or a stick deodorant so you can avoid putting that excess chemical in the air to get on your skin. Do you use aerosol deodorant or roll-on? No, I use roll-on right now. And that's probably the safest thing. I tend to use aerosol, and, and you can see, like especially if you stand in front of a window when you spray, you see the gas, you know, the propellant that comes out and everything. All that stuff can cause problems. Mm -hmm. So number 11, they say protect skin from items that create friction or cause pressure. Glasses is an example of this. Mm. When you wear glasses all the time, you, you have pressure on the bridge of your nose. You could have it down underneath your eyes, depending on how it sits on your, on your face. Uh, headphones is another one. If you wear over-the-ear headphones a lot to listen to music, you let you have over your headphones on an hour a week. I don't think that's excessive. There are those who don't use earbuds, but even earbuds could cause pressure and problems with pimples inside the ear like you've run into. Mm -hmm. um, but over the ear headphones can. If you wear a hat a lot, there are people that like to wear, keep their heads covered, especially in the winter time. So in the winter time, what happens is your skin dries out because you have the heat on them in the house. And most heat, like we have forced air heat here, it's a dry heat. So it dries the skin out, which can open the pores up. And then you put a hat on when you go outside. So the, the oil that your body secretes doesn't have a chance to evaporate. So what happens is it clings to the skin. It can clog the pores up. So again, another good example of when you should make sure that you're keeping your skin clean and keeping it well treated. Now, the wintertime, you might see your acne drop off a bit because it's so dry, uh, because that dryness in the air will cause the oil itself to evaporate. But when it evaporates, it still leaves a residue on the skin. So the moisture part of it will evaporate. Okay. Just like when you sweat, same thing. When you sweat, it's not just water that you're excreting from your body. There's chemicals, there's, there's salts that excrete. And when you sweat, the whole purpose of, of sweating is to cool the body. And it cools the body by evaporating that liquid off of your skin. Every time a drop of sweat evaporates, it takes a little bit of the heat with it. The problem is, is that it doesn't take those chemicals with it, those salts. So if you're out and working out and sweating, when your body dries, you'll feel almost like a crust on your body. And that's those salts that your body excretes, and that's what can clog the pores up. So that's why it's very important. When, you're, when the oil is excreted and it evaporates off, it leaves chemicals behind as well. So, again, very important to keep those things clean. And the last thing that they talk about here is help your teen manage and reduce stress. Now, we haven't talked about this at all yet. You know, we've talked about the chemical effects of puberty and so forth but stress is another thing that can cause acne and and do you have any idea why that is um no not really 
Well, the main reason for that is that it causes a chemical imbalance in the body. Your, your body excretes chemicals. Uh, it'll, when you're stressed out, you can, your body will burn through adrenaline. You'll, your body will generate endorphins to help you cope with the stress. And all these chemical changes that happen as a result of stress are manifested externally in your body. You may sweat. When you're nervous and stressed out, you might get sweaty palms or you might get heat flashes or something like that as a result of all the chemicals that are firing off in your body to deal with that stress. So stressful situations can actually cause acne. And it, just as much as stressful situations can cause issues with your heart or other parts of your body as your body tends to try and cope with it. So. They were the 12 things that we had for coping or managing with stress. Did you have anything to, to add or any questions or anything? Not really. Um, I, uh, I have found, I have been learning though that a lot of the stuff that you did originally, you need to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Like, don't go swimming anywhere. Don't go outside. <laughs> no, you don't have to do that. Like, the, the, I guess the point is, is that if you're going to do things, you just have to be mindful of the effects that the after effects that they have. You know, if you're going to go swimming, when you get done, you should rinse that, that chlorine off of your body. You know, if you're, if you go to the beach, for instance, you'll find that if you go to the beach and you leave the beach, they usually have these shower areas outside the beach that allow you to wash all that stuff off. It could be as simple as that. Or it could be as simple as, well, I got out of the, I got out of the pool. Let me go take a shower just to make sure I got everything off of me. All righty. So it's about knowing what to do if you're going to do these things. If you wear makeup, you know, when mommy was going to work, she would, she would put makeup on every day to go out. It's about coming home at the end of the day and cleaning that makeup off, using the proper tools to clean the makeup off. If you do gym class and you get home and you're all sweaty in gym class, especially if it's the middle of summer, or, you know, in the summertime in June and you're in gym class and you get home from school and you're sweating, go take a shower. It, it's, it's simple things like that that I think go a long way. Now, do you do anything for... Your acne now, is there any kind of treatment or special care that you take or anything? I mean, there is this soap that um, I can wash my face with. And, of course, I also shower in order to um, have my um, body get clean. And sometimes when I don't use the soap, I just wash my face with uh, a washcloth and water. But I know that I should probably be using the soap more than that. So, Well, even that, even that approach works. Just... just a damp cloth to wipe off any excess chemicals or sweat or anything that's on your skin is a step in the right direction. Now, the soap that you use, is it a prescription soap or is it over the counter? Over the counter. So it's something that anybody can use at that point. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the way to go. And how often do you wash your face? When I remember to, which isn't a lot. Okay. So that's one area that we can improve on that might help. Yeah. They're saying, you know, twice a day you should be doing this. That might be excessive depending on, on the effect that the soap has. Some of the medicated soaps can dry your skin out too much and be uncomfortable. And you don't want to make the situation worse. You don't want to replace one problem with another in order to solve the first one. Mm -hmm. But if things get to the point where you can't manage them, or if they're uncomfortable, or if they're having any of these psychosocial effects or physical effects that we talked about, you should probably see a doctor. Um, there's a lot of various medications that can be used these days in different techniques. There's even, you know, there's even uh, techniques where they use CO2, liquid CO2, to actually freeze the skin cells and can actually remove the dead skin cells forcefully that way to to ease the thing. One of the weirdest ones I ever heard, and it was, it worked. And this was one that I told the woman uh, that I'd worked with whose daughter had severe acne. It was, and this is going to sound disgusting. 
baby urine. Yeah. So baby urine that is applied to the face and left on for 15 minutes and washed off had a miraculous effect on her daughter. The, the, her other daughter had, a, had an infant, and they would put cloth diapers on her, and when the baby urinated, just urinated, not defecated, just urinated, uh, she would actually apply it to her face, and she saw a marked improvement in her acne within the first three weeks. Now, whether that's the ammonia that's in the urine or something else, I don't know. You could probably, I, I'm guessing, you could probably recreate the same effect using the the raw chemicals. Uh, but that was an old wives' tale. She tried it and, and it worked. And I'm not saying it works for everybody. But it's worthwhile, if, if you're suffering from acne, it's worthwhile to go out and do the research. Seek the professional help. There's, there's solutions out there. You know, don't let it become, don't let it take over. Don't let it make you depressed. Don't let it stop you from doing the things that you want to do. There's a solution out there, and, and you'll find one eventually. And if not, you'll eventually grow out of it. And that's that sort of thing. There's light. There's always light at the end of the tunnel. I think that's the most important thing when it comes to acne. Mm -hmm. So that was all we had for today. We'll come back after a very quick break, and we'll give you your closing remarks and shout-outs. Go for closing remarks. Okay, so to anyone out there who is suffering from acne, I'm kind of just going to sound like a broken record here, kind of repeating what you already said. You should definitely seek some medical help, especially if it's severe. And if it's just mild stuff and you're still like me and you still have the acne, you should still clean it in order to um, manage it. And hey, when you get older, hopefully, um, it'll be gone. Okay. Sage words of advice there. Uh, before we go, we just need to finish up some quick business here. Uh, we are available for subscription. If you want to get our video versions of the podcast, you can look us up under Insights into Things. The audio versions of our podcast uh, should show up as Insights into Teens. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, and Pandora now. We do invite folks to reach out and give us your feedback. Tell us what you uh, like about the show, what you don't like. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get our high-res videos on youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream on Twitch six days a week at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime member, then you get a free monthly Prime subscription. We would love your support there. You can get audio versions of the podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we are insights into things. And you can get links to all of our shows, videos, audio, uh, show notes, transcripts, and host profiles at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Well done. And I think that is it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.